Hi everybody, I'm Daryl and welcome to my garage. So what I got going here today is a 2006 uh, KX65. This is my son, uh, son Trevor's motorcycle and basically we got it last year and we haven't got into it yet, at least on the clutch side, uh, to see what's going on. So uh, spring's coming up, it's February 10th today, so uh, we're going to be doing some riding coming up and now's the time that we want to, uh, you know, kind of prep it, see what's going on there with the clutch and uh, I'm going to take you along for the ride. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, basically what I've done already is I've uh, drained the oil, so the oil is out of it. I've uh, drained the coolant. Um, I've disconnected the hoses and I've disconnected the clutch cable. So basically we're ready to start disassembling things. Now I've already had this apart already, so a lot of the stuff's going to come apart real easily. And what I'm going to do is just try to explain it to you as I'm taking things apart. Uh, so that you can see it in case you happen to have a 2006 or something similar uh, KX65 uh, that you'll be able to kind of see what it looks like from the inside. I'll try to give you a little tips that I kind of found along the way. So, uh, of course, I did refer to the manual and uh, done, done the steps that uh, they recommend. So, <clears throat> in any case, uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is see if I can try to zoom you in here a little bit so you can get a little bit closer to see what's going on. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is take the uh, the brake, is the uh, brake lever off. It's a uh, it's an eight millimeter um, Allen head. So I'm just going to pull that out real quick here. Get that going the right way. Now I did grease it when I put it back together, so it comes in and out nice and easy, slides nice and easy. This spring, which is the return spring, will gonna be, is going to be, be disconnected, so we'll take that out, drop that right there. Uh, after just being that we've drained all the fluids, we're going to start move on to the kickstart. Like I said, I've had this apart already, so it's everything's just kind of put in there more or less hand tight, so I can take it apart. Okay. Kickstart comes off. I'm just going to put this over here to the side with my parts. Uh, next step here is going to be to remove the water pump cover. The reason why we've got to remove the water pump cover is because we got to take the impeller off in order to get it out. So uh, let's take that apart. That's an eight millimeter. Now this one right here. There's basically three on the outside. This one right here is the, the drainage plug. So if you just take that one, that's where all the uh, coolant pulls out of. So you don't need to take that one out. Let's take all those out. Again, you want to you know, try to take these out in a, a cross function or cross pattern so that you, everything comes out easily without warping anything. These are, there's three of them. The long one is on the top right. Just rock this nice and easy. Okay. The inside looks like it's nice and clean. The gasket's in good shape. I take these parts, put them over to the side. Next thing we need to do is take off the impeller. Um, sometimes this can be hard to take things to take off uh, in the engine if you don't have a um, flywheel holder or if you don't have a piston stop. I happen to have a piston stop in here, which is basically. Uh, like a threaded rod that has a plastic piece on the bottom so when the piston comes up it hits that and stops the engine from spinning so it gives you some force to uh, turn things against so on this particular one this is just an eight millimeter spin that right off now be very careful when you take this off there is a washer behind this impeller okay stayed I don't know if you can see it See it? There's a little washer there. Make sure that washer stays with your parts and put it just aside right here. Okay. All right, now we got those off. We can actually take the side cover off. I've already removed most of the bolts. I've only got two in there now just to kind of hang it on. So let's take those off. They're all the same. So when you take, take them out, They'll all, uh, you know, they'll all be the same size, so you can just put them in a pile with itself, with themselves. All right. <clears throat> now, 
if this gives you a hard time to come off, which mine is giving me a hard time because this impeller shaft is, it's got like a groove on that shaft, so it kind of hangs up kind of on the bearing a little bit that's in there. So uh, it hangs up, and I got to be kind of forceful to take it apart. So uh, what I'm using is just a little uh, dead blow hammer, and it's going to give it a little couple of taps. Nothing hard. And what it does is just kind of help separate that gasket. We're going to kind of rock it back and forth here. It's really the impe impeller <clears throat> that's hanging it up here. All right, now, you just heard something fall. And what just fell is a gear that spins the uh, uh, that spins the clutch from the uh, crank. All right, I will show you that that gear is held on by this circlip. All right, this circlip I, I removed it uh, for you know just for video purposes. I didn't put it back on because I don't want to keep. You're technically you're supposed to. You're supposed to not reuse these. I'm going to reuse this, but I'm not putting it on back and forth, back and forth, because I don't want to stretch it. So what you heard fall was that gear, and I'll show that to you. Okay, there it goes. Pull this out here. Can I tilt it down? All right. So actually two parts fell out. This piece needs to stay on here and get it back on there. Okay, so this is the part that actually turns. This is attached to the to the crank, and that's what touches the, attaches to the clutch. So I'm just gonna step aside here. See if I can kind of. My hands are dirty. Let's see if I can just zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better of what I'm talking about here. Oh, the other way. So basically, it goes right here. I know my hand's in the way, but you can see it afterwards. All right, so that's what spins the crank when the clutch, when it disengages and engages. All right, so like I said, this clip, this clip here, is on the end of that. I took it off, just like I mentioned before, just not to stretch it. So let's just take this off so as not to lose it. We'll put it aside, there's no up or down, just goes whatever, okay? We'll put that aside. Next thing that came out was this piece here. Okay, this attaches, goes into the clutch area. So it goes right into here like this. What happens is, this is the cover. When you pull your lever, it's got a little tab in there. And when you spin that tab, that tab pushes this piece which disengages the clutches all right so that's how it disengages it what we're gonna do is take this out there's two pieces involved with this so just be cautious this will come apart you can see here it's sticking because I put a little grease there but it's this and there's a washer there you can see the little washer there keep that together I want to set that aside I kind of tend to put my pe my parts into two pieces, the water pump area, and then I have a clutch area. So, all right, so I got that aside. Um, ah, you need to go after this. You need to get this out, the clutch basket out, before you can get this out. Oh, I'm leaving you. Out. I'm leaving a step out. Hold on. Inside this right side cover is the water pump gear. All right. When I looked at this a little bit, oh, there you go. When I looked at this a little bit closer, I could see that there were teeth missing this. This is how I got it so far into this anyway, but I noticed that there was some plastic teeth. There you go. Can you see the plastic teeth missing there? So needless to say, we've got another one of these on order. All right, I don't want to make them out of plastic, but they do. All right, they're like they're like thirty-six bucks too, so a little more expensive than, than than what I expected. So now 
if this is the say for example if the clutch was disengaged, this is how this would spin. See how this spins? That's like if the clutch was disengaged, as if the clutch was pushed in and there was nothing on this, no pressure, this thing would spin easily, okay? What I mentioned before is about this gear, this attaches the crank to the clutch, all right? So you're going to want to have that on when you go to take this off, and you want to take this bolt out before you take these off on the outside, otherwise you end up just spinning. All right, uh, I think it's like 14, oops, there's like a 14 millimeter here. All right, like I mentioned before, everything's just hand tight because I was already in here doing this. So I just, everything just comes out nice and easy for the most part, all right? That's that. You need to have this in here though because that's what's gonna provide some resistance when you wanna get this off. I'll have to put this back in when I wanna tighten it. This is gonna go aside with my clutch parts. All right, so now I can take this gear off again put that aside and what I'm going to do is take take this off take these off actually no I'm going to put it back on that'll prevent that from spinning but not that it needs to because they're like I said they're all loose but if they're tight you're going to want to do that so I'm just going to take these off and you want to alternate when you're doing them so pull this one out a little bit pull this one out far I can pull them out and then I'm going to alternate between these two, so a little bit at a time, a little bit, a little bit. You just don't want them to get get too cockeyed and like get hung up on something. There are some springs behind here, so what I'm going to do is put my hand underneath it as I take these last ones out because I'm expecting they're probably going to fall. It's probably going to fall right into my hands. I think they're all loose. Yeah. Okay. Pull this right out. Ah, the one was hanging. The one's hanging on. There we go. All right. Let these all fall down. This is basically just the plate that holds them all in. I'm going to put that aside with my clutch parts. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my springs out. Now what you should do is measure your springs. You should be measuring the height of the spring from the top to bottom. There is a spec for it. Uh, I did look at mine already and uh, these are out of spec. So I'm going to be ordering new springs. Basically I ordered a, uh, touch, uh, a Tusk um, clutch kit which comes with new fiber plates, new clutch plates, and new, new um, New springs, they're EBC springs. Heavy duty springs. And I also ordered a clutch cable, because if I figured oh, I'm gonna replace all this, I wanna give it my son like basically a brand new clutch because everybody knows what a brand new clutch feels like. It's like butter, it's beautiful. All right, so uh, we've got those springs out and we've got that bolt out here. So now this whole clutch basket will basically be able to come out. So I'm gonna remove the gear Put that to the side. And basically at this point, the whole clutch basket can come out. I don't want the whole clutch basket to come out, so I'm gonna try to hold the basket in, get my fingers on the um, fiber plates and on the basket and kind of just pull it and slide it all out. It's gonna come out as like a, a clutch pack. Now, behind this is a washer. So be cautious that you don't lose that washer. washer right here. All right, that's going to stay with that. Now, another thing that you're going to want to do is look at your clutch plates and look at your fiber plates. So basically, let's see if I can show you what I'm going to do here. Is I'm going to separate this. All right, this is the back cover. And this is basically the front. So what you want to do is put your fingers, see this, put your thumbs right in here. Just give it a little push, nice and easy, okay? And what that does, it allows the back to come off. I'm gonna put that with my clutch parts, okay? And then these are your plates. This is your fiber plate. Fiber plate. 
try to find a clean place to put this. I'm running low on paper towels. All right, anyway, so it's fiber plate. Steel plate. All right. You should measure these. Measure, uh, use a, uh, I have a digital caliper that I measured them. These are within spec, uh, but they're like on the end of being within spec. It's probably, you know, one season or halfway through the season, they're going to be out. So I'm going to replace them all. Basically, you just, you alternate them. All right. First one is going to be the fiber. Fiber, steel, fiber, steel, fiber, steel, fiber, steel, fiber. So it's fiber on either end. At either end, and then it's going to be the uh, the steel plates that go in between. Okay. And that's how you get the clutch out. And what I'm going to do, just to kind of, just for uh, continuity, just keep things together so I don't lose track of what's what. I'm going to grab this, put this back together here. That. Then when I set it down with my clutch parts, I'll make sure that that washer goes on top so I don't lose track of what's what here. Okay. All right. Uh, so we can get just a, uh, a quick peek here at what's behind the clutch basket. So I'll just remove the clutch basket. Now, behind that, there's always something that's behind it. This particular one is just a bushing. So make sure you slide that bushing back in there. All right. I can zoom in and get a little more better of a view here. Let's see. Nope. All right. So this is the counter shaft or part of the counter shaft, and then uh, here you have your. Uh, your shift shaft, which is here, comes and comes goes through the other side. Comes here. I had to replace a shift shaft on my other motorcycle, and basically you pull this out, put a new in. There's a this is a, the the star indents with the so when you change the gears, you can kind of feel something there. Um, and then this is the kick start where that goes. Um, so if you ever want to change your clutch basket, say you want to put it a put in a, um, a Henson or uh, something of that nature, you need to grind these rivets here, pop them out, and then they'll, you basically want to put this plate back onto the new, uh, the new clutch basket that you get. So you grind these out, punch out. There's tons of videos on YouTube. You'll be able to see that if you want to do that. Punch that out, and you put a new basket on. I believe the new basket has threads of bolts that you can use. All right, one thing you could also look for when you're working on the clutch here, sometimes they have grooves. Sorry, sometimes they have grooves in these areas and you can file it down a little bit. Trevor's this particular one is like not bad at all. I'm really surprised. But it's not bad at all. For 2006, I mean, I'd expect these grooves to be a little bit worse, uh, but they're they're not they're actually not bad at all. All right. So, uh, I'm going to put this back in here. Make sure that it sets back all the way in the way that it's supposed to. There it goes. There's some gears back there that it needs to line up with, so just make sure it lines up and goes all the way back. And when you spin things, it goes back. And that's it. All right. So uh, that's basically where we are uh, until I get the until I get the uh, new parts in. So what I've ordered is a new. Um, water pump impeller, I guess, shaft or gear. So that's going to be coming. I got a uh, whole, like I mentioned before, a whole clutch kit. And um, what else? Oh, gaskets, spark plug, and we got some numbers uh, for Trevor because he's going to be racing in the Hair Scramble Series this year, uh, 2000, uh, what are we, 2018. 2018. So um, I'll get back to you when the other parts come in and we do the reassembly. All right, so um, I realized that I was reading up on it and it said that uh, if you're going to replace the seals in these, the oil seals, which I plan on doing, 
you should replace the bearing as well. So I've ordered the bearing and I've ordered the seals and I'm just going to take everything out right now. Uh, everything, you know, the bearings, the bearings seem fine, everything spins fine, but like I mentioned previously, you can see the kind of the grooves on this, on this shaft here. And so if I'm just gonna if I'm gonna replace this, I might as well replace everything. So I'm gonna be removing removing the seals, removing the um, the bearing. So here I go. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna want to try to pry it out, and I don't want to damage the seal in this area or the uh, water pump in this area. So let me show you what I got going on here. So this right here, gotta try to pull that out. All right, let's try to pull that out. Uh, I always want to protect the surface here, all around here. Just want to make sure that we, you know, don't want to damage that. That's going to be the ceiling. That's going to be a ceiling surface. So um, I'm going to figure out how to pull this out. I'm going to try to use a longer screwdriver. And like I mentioned, I want to be careful about potentially marring that area. So I'm going to try to put my thumb under here and see if it comes out somewhat easily. Oh, that came out pretty easily. So there's one. And pay attention to how you take them out. So back to where we were. Got the one out. Managed to get the spring out. Let's see if I can pull this other one out here. Definitely not coming out easily. Definitely want to try to get that out though. So I'll try a couple other couple other techniques here. Now they said what you can do is kind of try to get it from the inside with a little punch or something, and kind of try to punch it out. This might little itty bitty tiny punch that I have here. if I can catch it on that lip. Kind of feel it there. Let me use this punch. Try to catch it on the inside of that lip. And I'm going to try it first just using my hand. See if that does it. sure if it's moving. Don't really think it is, so I'll give it a little tap. Alright, that definitely got it moving. So we're definitely going the right way here. Okay. I hope you can see it, but we got it out good portion of the way here. So let's see if I can just kind of get my screwdriver in here and work it out the rest of the way without doing any damage. Okay, pull that right out. So this is the end that goes in. There's, these go in a specific way so definitely pay attention. This ring, this little spring goes in there like that. Alright, now it's going to be time to take that bearing out. Definitely don't have a bearing puller that small, so I'm going to have to see what I can do to 
knock this out. Got this dowel pin here. Those are, oh, this one's going to come out easily. I'll put that over here. See if I can get this one out. So I can lay it flat. I never have luck getting these dowel pins out. The alignment pins. Alright. Let's see, of course it's the one that's right. Right there. Alright, we're gonna need something to put this on. I guess I definitely got a little clearance, so let's see if I can find. Dang, I really want something to get in there and pull that out. Uh, I could heat it and then maybe punch it. I think that's going to be our best bet. Heat it and give it a tap with a proper sized socket. And a 14 is going to be just a hair too big. All right. Heating it's going to be the trick. That's going to be the key. So let's do that. That's a little too big. All right. So basically what you want to do is just kind of heat the metal around the outside there. Big fan of the map gas. Basically, I'm just going to kind of hold this over here, make sure there's no rubber around it, which there isn't. And we don't want to heat the bearing, I want to heat around the bearing. bearing just fell out. It just literally just fell out. That was beautiful. Alright, so this is really hot. Let me just try to get this some of that grease or gunk was there. I can't believe that bearing just literally fell out like that. It goes to show you what a little heat will do. Expands it. Bearing just literally fell out. I pick it up but it's you know it's extremely hot here. Let me get some pliers. There it is. Look at that. Smoking. Yeah, man. I've never had one come out that easy. That was incredibly lucky. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of wipe it out. It's hot now, so. Gotta be careful. And that's how you remove the bearings and the seals for the water pump. And we'll be putting new ones. New ones. Oh, that's, you're still hot. Uh, we'll put new ones in soon. 
All right, so I got my parts in from Rocky Mountain ATV, and basically what we're going to be doing here right now is we're going to be putting in the water pump bearing, uh, the water pump shaft with the gear, and we're going to be putting in the uh, the oil seals. So uh, I'm going to try to do the heating method. So I'm going to heat the uh, the outer cover, and I have a bearing. The the bearing right here it's on a bunch of ice. You'll see it in a couple minutes. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to heat that up, hopefully it'll expand a bit, and then I'm going to take the bearing out of the ice and kind of just try to, hopefully, it'll just drop right in there. So let's get to it. Okay, so basically just kind of prepped it up a little bit. I'm going to get my bearing out, ready to go in. I'm going to kind of heat it up one more time real quick. It's here. Heat it up. And you can see I'm heating it up. Yeah, heat it up. Grab the bearing and hopefully just drop it in there. Oh, son of a bit. In there you go. Alright, didn't quite go as well as I planned it, but I should be able to kind of just get in there with this. Okay, so I got my rubber mount, so I got a kind of square. Now, what I'm going to do is just use a appropriate sized socket which I happen to have here which looks like it's going to be a what is it going to be? a 16 I'm going to rest it here on the padding on this flat surface now you have there is a I don't know if you can see that there that's the uh, where is that? that is a look dowel to make sure when you hit it, you do not have that dowel on the surface. You want to have that hanging over the edge. All right, you don't want to mash that. Just hold that here. Give it a couple good shots. Okay, dowel is good. You can see it. Can you see it? It's spinning nice and good. Everything's in there nice and tight. Give it a little look. Make sure it like looks nice and square all the way around. Which it does. Give it a peeky from the inside. Looks good in there. So it looks fully seated down there, so we're in good shape. Now I'm just going to let this cool just a little bit um, before I go do any any other work to it. But in the meantime, what I can do is work on the clutch, and I'll kind of work on that now. So we'll put this aside, let that cool, put my torch out of the way. So we got our clutch. So we got the the old the old clutch plates here. Okay, with the washer in the back, we don't want to forget that. We'll put that down. We've got our new, our new clutch plates. I've been soaking in oil for a while. They recommend 24 hours. I always heard everybody say 24 hours, but I've had them soaking for probably about six, to, uh, six or eight hours or something like that. So um, I think that'll do it. I'm not too worried about that. All right. Uh, Quick, put that back. All 
All right, so now we're going to replace the clutch. So we're going to place, we're going to be replacing everything. We're going to be replacing the steel plates, and we're going to be replacing the fiber plates. Remember, this went on this way. So let's slowly take it apart and remember how we're going to be putting it back together. That is going to be key. So I've also got um, these are uh, the old springs. I've or I've got some new springs in, and those are right here. So we got some EBC heavy duty springs, and then I also do have the uh, the new clutch cable. This thing, this clutch is going to feel like butter for my little guy, which everybody can appreciate a, a good clutch, right? Everybody can appreciate that. All right, all right. So washer is going to come off. Push that back plate off here. Take that down. Just set that just like that, okay? Let's just remember how we did it. So it's going to be fiber, steel, or, or they call it the clutch plate, fiber, steel, fiber. fiber steel fiber so we're going to be starting with a fiber up here steel and just going to alternate it okay so I've got my clutch fibers and plates right here so we're going to take this reach in Grab a nice oily fiber. Stick that oily baby right on there. Grab a nice lubed up steel. Now, there are edges on here. I've always heard that they can go either way. Just want to try to do them all the same. So if you feel like one edge is rounded and one edge is sharp. I always heard you can always do it. You can do it either way and just do them all the same. So I like to put the edge, the sharp edge, facing in. So I try to do them all the same way. Like I said, I have never heard that it mattered, just that you do them the same way. All right. Nice goopy fiber. Steel, feel that sharp edge. You can definitely feel it. There's a definite difference. I put the Facing in. Fiber. Steel. Fiber. That's going the right way. Smooth, sharp, smooth, sharp. Steel. And we'll top it off with a goopy fiber. Okay. Remember, this baby goes back on the back. Like so. Okay. We got our washer. It's going to go on the back of that. And now we're just going to line this goopy mess back up on this. So let's see what we can do here. my washer fall. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stick my washer right on there. Oh, it would help if I moved that camera a little bit, wouldn't it? Uh, let me put that down real quick. Alright. Like I said, I put the washer back in there already. Take this. 
All right, and you can see, slide this in there. And you gotta kinda wheel it around to get all the parts to line up. And if it's not going on the, the shaft in there a little bit, you just gotta turn this so it lines up. There it goes. And then you need to move your clutch plates a little bit so those line up. Okay, and it'll eventually just kind of whoop right back in there. All right, we're back in business with the clutch part. It's got new clutch uh, fibers, new clutch fiber plates, new steel plates. Um, just a little tip for some people who do uh, like you know uh, woods riding or woods racing. Um, some people will put a flywheel, if you know you can tell, I have a flywheel right here for my son. Uh, but also, what you can do is if you have aluminum plates or you have lightweight plates, if you get the uh, steel plates, they add a little bit of extra weight and basically this saves the same, serves the same purpose as having a flywheel, a flywheel weight. And it's not nearly as much, but it does uh, provide some, some effect, some similar effect of uh, weight to it. All right, so I'm just gonna take these old ones, put them back here in this bag, step them, slip them aside over here. Okay, I guess we can go back to the water pump. What we're working on there, so let's bring that back over here. So, all right, this baby's cooled off. Again, we've got it seated. Everything's working well. And we're going to be ready to install the oil seals, okay? So the oil seals go a specific way, and I will show you how they go. This thing is leaking droopy oil, okay. This is the inner seal, and this is the outer seal. You always want to look at your at your instructions when you're doing this. Okay, I just looked I just looked it up in in my book. So you can see this. I don't know if you can see. There's a little metal ring in there, and there's a little metal ring in in this one as well. But this one is more visible. All right, you want this one to be facing outwards. So this will go in first. This is the first one. This is the second one. I don't know if you can see the lips. You want the lips facing outwards, okay, because the shaft is going to come through it. You want to lube these up with uh, some molly, what do they call it, molly, uh, molly disulfide. Uh, molly bedenum. Molly bedenum disulfide grease. All right, so you want to lube these up inside the lips. Uh, so um, it's kind of firm. Just give it a make, give it a sh make sure that it's going in the right way. There is a way that it goes in. Now uh, this may be able to just kind of push right in with your fingers. I believe that is the case. So I'm just gonna. Try to slide that in there. Actually, you know what? I like to put. A it's going in. Let me get a uh, socket that's appropriately sized and just see if we can kind of smush it in there a little bit. All right, yeah, so you can see that went a lot easier with a little lube. All right, push that in by hand. Then, let's do the same thing. We'll get some lube on this. Remember, we want to get these lips facing outwards. Whoops, come back here, you. All right, so you can see it got that in there pretty good. Uh, put some oil on this one, down there, and just kind of stick that baby in there too.
trying to get to push this a little bit further in. Alright. Alright, so just using this, uh, what is this, a 12, 12 millimeter socket here, just kind of help me push this in a little bit further to get it seated a little bit deeper where it should be. So now it's seated down all the way at the bottom there. And let's we'll put in this last one here. Now we do need to put a lot of, they said to put a lot of grease in there, so let's put some grease on those lips if we can get them in there, get it in there and kind of like pack it in. Alright, so I'll get some, get all that grease in there and also going to kind of put some In the inside of that so when it pushes through it pushes it through all right so that seal is loaded up and get some on here push that in Okay. Next, I'm just going to wipe, wipe it all clean now. I want to try to wipe the inside as clean as I can of all that oil and the lube. Clean off where this gasket is going to go. Use this little tool to kind of push in the, the oil. Get it all in there until around the around the lips of that. Okay. Give it a peek. Make sure that it's seated all the way. Just giving it all just one little tweak here. Make sure it's sealed. All right, that's in there nice and level. All right, next step would be to put it on. So what we're gonna do now is get the water pump shaft. Let's just move this to the side over here for now, okay. So we've got a new water pump shaft. New water pump shaft is right here. Let me back you out a little bit. Oh, wrong way here. All right, so we got the water pump shaft. The other one was gear was stripped, and how that happened, I'm figuring, was that it was probably over tightened, and when it rubbed against the other gear, it kind of just skipped over a couple teeth and kind of stripped it, knocked a couple teeth off or whatever. So this here is the new one. This here is the old one. See the stripped teeth knot, all right. This one's got some grooves worn in it. This one's straight up. That will sit right in there. And mesh with that. Okay. Very good. What I'm going to do is put some grease on the end of this. End of this little part of 
part that's going to go in the inner bearing. Okay. Pull this little one off just for a second here, just so I can see it, make sure it fits good. That spins nice. Oh, dude. Butter, look at that. Butter. Perfect. Okay. Put that gear back on. Wipe this off. Okay. Now we're back to. gear in the circlip we're going to need these so I'm just going to pull them put them into position this piece will go in and mesh up with that gear can you see that all right so that was this so what I did was I took this out well we put it in but where are we here it is all right I take it put it in there and I make sure this gear and those are meshed nicely. Okay, we don't want one sticking out too far, not one sticking in. You want them to be meshed just about evenly all the way in. Okay. Next, take this gear. It's gonna go on. Want to make sure that goes in and meshes up nicely. Okay, next, circle clip. Snap ring pliers. A tip for that when you're doing them, always put your finger on it. Let's try to do this while I'm out of your way here. But put your finger on it so that way it doesn't go flying off. I like to seat the bottom. Just give it a little spread so it goes right over the top. It's right on there, man. Now, the second most important thing after getting it on is making sure that it's definitely on there. You don't want one of these things flying around. So you just take your, I like to take my little tool, see if it spins. Just make sure it's not coming off. Alright? That's not coming off. It's secure. All right, so that's lined up. Next, we can put the clutch back together. And I'm going to need to check what the torque setting is for that bolt that goes in the center here. So let's see here. I'm kind of a kind of a fan of Loctite. I'm always especially with these motors they, they you know they, they vibrate like hell. So I don't put a whole lot really. Just a little dab. Alright, I mean that's even that's even a lot. Take a little off. Okay. Forty-seven foot-pounds. Now, if I remember correctly, once you get that installed, this will continue to spin unless you get the uh, clutch springs in. So let's get the clutch springs in, get those tightened down, and then I'll bet we'll be able to tighten that up. If I remember correctly, that's the deal. That is the deal. Here's the clutch plate, or the pressure plate, so to speak, with the springs. All the springs in there. Can you see? Yeah, I guess you can see. 
try to do it from the side. All right. They, these are torqued to, oh, what did they say? Uh, 82 in, inch pounds or 9.3 newton meters. I don't even know if mine goes that throw, goes that low. I don't think it does. So I'm just going to have to kind of do it by, by feel. And I think I'm going to put, again, a little bit of Loctite on these just to be sure. Just a hair. Slowly tighten these down. going to just use my wrench because I get a, I know you know basically after I do it for a while you kind of get the idea of how tight it should be right, my piston stop is gonna hit there we go That's tight. We're going to do this at 47 foot pounds. Okay. 
47 foot pounds. All right, and there you go. There's the clutch, new clutch, and water pump gear. We're going to put the side cover on. I have a new gasket for that. Let me just clean up the area. This can be tricky to get on. I've dealt with it before already. So I'm going to kind of show you how I do it. What I find is it's important to get this thing set, this lever. You want that set so that it's, you see that piece there? You want that so that it's facing pretty much just straight forward. All right, maybe back just a hair because that's going to allow that center piece to go in. So let's put that piece in. You can probably just put a little grease around it, would be a good idea to kind of help hold it. I've already kind of put a little, little bit of other grease on it, but I'm going to put just a little bit more. It's going to help hold that in there. And here we go. Get that gasket to stay. Stay on. It's going to be a pain in the ass. I can tell already. I can tell already. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the tip that I heard from somebody. You take a little grease, just a little bit, and you stick it on the, just a couple little areas like where the, where the dowels go, and just helps, helps hold it on for you. Looks like a sil some silicone or something, which I did not notice before. It's hard to do it one hand. I thought it's a big deal, but I don't want to come loose in there. All right. Yeah, it's like a little rubbery silicone. All right. Back to this. We'll go there. Just stick there. I really might have to get that dowel out. The other one came out kind of easily. Let's see if I can wiggle this out. Yeah. See, that came out nice. That kind of will help hold that on there. I want to get this other one out. Come on. Son of a bitch. You just ain't coming. What if I use a 
pair of vice grips and give it a not a crazy pinch but just a, enough to see if I can turn it no that baby's in there bro oh nope. you ain't coming out okay that's it not worth any worth causing any damage over I'll tell you that all right so you're in there and you're going to be steady just like that. I see that. Okay, I got that there. In there. I'm going to work on lining you up. That bearing. Okay. Oh, would you be a son of a bitch? You're not going to believe what I did. This one here is the one that's in there. You come out now. You go down here. This one. Silly me. Okay. Let's try it again. For like the third time, fourth time, whatever. You go there. There. light There's a thing can see in there To want to manipulate that kickstart thing a little bit. So I'm going to put that screw in and see if I can manipulate that a little bit to get this to go in a little better. Come on, bitch. There you go. Just a 
couple of these in just to help. Oh, that's not the one I want. Just to help with alignment. I'm just going to kind of put these in slowly. Kind of pull this together a little bit at a time here. Now we're going to put this in temporarily. Just so I can pull everything together. So I want to just pull this inside cover all together. And then I'll put that gasket back in there. I still got to put the, obviously going to put the water pump impeller back in. Like I mentioned, I was doing this to kind of pull everything together. to clean off that shaft. Had some of that grease come through, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you just want to make it clean.
Okay, so. Here's the water pump impeller. Water pump impeller goes there, right? The water pump impeller, this goes through. There's a little washer. There's a little washer. Goes on the back side. Alright. This I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite on there. Alright, let's put a Loctite on that and I'm going to knock some off of it. There is a torque setting for this. Obviously, there's torque setting for everything. Again, it's the old, the old hand tightness here. I don't want to strip those plastic gears like what happened previously, which is what I think happened previously. So. That shall do. That's tight enough. Don't need to overdo it. We got a little Loctite in there. That should take care of that. Let me check the clutch here. Okay, it's working properly. Let's get the new water pump seal gasket. Water pump gasket cover. Water pump gasket cover. <laughs> gasket. The fuck is that? I guess that's how it goes. Kind of weird. But okay. Alright, this surface is cleaned up, it's flat enough, it's good to go. Going to get these lined up properly. You go there. You go there. Oop, snuck off, you dirty dog. Take this out. Let's put a little Loctite on these covers here. Torque those down.
pen on this one here. Get the old spritzer. Low lock pen on this guy here. Do all these by hand again. In like a crisscross fashion. How about you over here, mister? Back and forth here. And one last tightness here. Just checking to make sure they're all about the same tightness, which they are. Alright. So I'm good. Next step, we're going to put these coolant hoses back on. Put those back up.
Get up there. There you go. Alright. Now, I did want to run the new clutch louder. I would like to get that done tonight. So I'm just going to check how it's routed here. So I see it goes through there. Pretty simple, the routing. Pull that right out. It comes right through there. Can't wait to feel how buttered his clutch is gonna be. Romeo and Juliet. Alright, so you come down here. do this. Sounds like it's raining out. There.
can't let me more slack out of that, can I? That's all I got, brother. That's all I got. Just a little more, a little more tension on there. So 
So he's got a little, that's like a 10. Start coming to an end here. Coming to an end. A little Loctite on this. That's pretty sure that's a ten. Oh, I got a ten right here. No, nice. It's recessed in there. Right, I ain't going anywhere. It's good. Rear brake. See brake. Sounds like it is pouring out there. Not cool. Not gonna want to go inside. Uh, you know what? I might want to put the spring in there first. Spring, gotta go back in there. I guess I can get this in here and I'll work that spring back. I've come to find that one of my favorite tools that I never had really was one of this this spring puller. Like six ninety nine from uh, what you call it there, Rocky Mountain ATV. I can't believe it took me so long to get one of these things, dude. Key. For when it comes to putting springs on, springs off, it's worth every single penny. Left to do. Got the clutch. All right. So here's what we did. New clutch. Fiber plates, steel plates, springs. I can definitely feel the clutch is tight, nice and tight. New water pump bearing, outer bearing. New water pump shaft with the gear. New water pump seals. New clutch cable adjusted. Got to put oil back in it and I got to put the coolant back in it. So I think that's going to put an end for it tonight. Alright everyone so basically you can see there's some exhaust here. I did just uh, start it up and it's running running well. 
no leaks so far. Just kind of did a quick, quick start. Ran it for just uh, probably just not even a minute, and I'm gonna put you back up a little bit further higher here so you can get a better view. So yeah, uh, so far so good. Everything seems to be going. Uh, This thing is killing me. Because you're a crook. I don't want you, crook. I want you like that. Alright. Alright, so you can see they got a little exhaust in here. I did just start it. It was the bike was running good, no leaks. So far, water pump's holding up. No uh, leaks in the gasket, no leaks in the oil. So uh, I'll just give you, give you a quick start here real quick. So once I get the bike down off the tie downs, I'll just check the coolant and again, make sure that it's you know all topped off. Uh, oil is oil is fine; it's good to go. Uh, but sometimes when you tip the bike, you know, back and forth, the coolant will kind of settle, and you can put in just you know a little bit more, just kind of top it off. So I'm just gonna make sure that I do that, and then uh, that's it. So that was uh, that was a water pump water pump replacement uh, clutch. Well, water pump shaft with bearing and seals with clutch pl clutch plates fibers and uh, also the new clutch cable uh, the only thing left to do is I'll put this guard on skid plate I'll put get the skid plate mounted probably tomorrow oh I put a new spark plug in there so things running crisp that's it